This video is sponsored by Middle Kids Shop. My name is Sayiram. Um, I'm a mommy to a seven month old boy. I'm an investment banker. And then I also have a side hustle selling makeup. Okay, so let me just say that technically we were not really trying, but in hindsight, I think I stopped looking forward to my period when I got married. So um, I found out so th in February, the day I was supposed to have my period, I was a day late. And immediately, I'm in fact, the thing is I'm never late with my period. So once I was a day late, I quickly got a test. In fact, I was in the office. I went to get a pregnancy <laughs> test kit and then I tried it and it was positive. But um, just to be sure, I went back again. Um, when I closed from work, I got a couple more kits just to be sure. And then got home. I, I couldn't, I, was, I wanted to wait and then till the next day because I was told that um, you could have a false positive or whatever, whatever. So I wanted to just wait till the next day, but I couldn't. I just tried it again that evening and it was bold, like two lines and yes, that was confirmed. So, waited for Habi to get home. The intention was to go all dramatic, put flowers on them, but I was so excited. I was like, guess what? And it was, what? And I showed him this. I had about four sticks. I just showed him <laughs> We are pregnant and yeah, so it was nice. The day that I was giving that was due first November was also my mother-in-law's birthday. And being Catholics, we would always go to mass on your birthday in the morning. We go for morning mass. So um, but the day before I'd experienced the bloody show. So which was 31st of October, I'd experienced the bloody show. So I went to um I still, I think on the 35th, I was still, I had final rounds to do, so I was driving around, even with uh, getting a few contractions here and there, but I didn't mind. Then at dawn, the contractions became a little more, well, the cramps, it was like menstrual cramps, became a little more intense, but I, it was still very manageable, and it was about 20 minutes, 30 minutes apart, so no issues. So morning, fast forward, first November morning, we went to the church and I had a doctor's appointment there any day anyway. So we went to church um, for morning mass, went to say our prayers. After that, my mother-in-law insisted that Father blesses me since I was going to the hospital and that was supposed to be my due day. Then Father blessed me. I went then drove to the hospital. I called my doctor and he said, speak to any nurse you see in white. And then I said, I think I'm in labor. And then she was like, how do you know you are in labor? And I said, well, I saw the blood yesterday and I am having cramps and I think I'm in labor. And she said, she didn't really believe because the way I was walking about, no, no one could tell. So then she said she would check me. So she took me to the emergency. And then that thing, they put, she put her hand in there to check my, uh, my, um, how much I dilated my dilation and she said I was 4 cm I was actually in active labor and was, she, so she said we were going to process me and take me to the delivery ward and um, to the labor ward okay so uh, it was there was another woman also in my room who was in labor who was screaming and I was there and the, the doctors were asking me a couple of questions they were writing things down and I, I could still feel the cramps. It wasn't an intense. Meanwhile, this other woman was screaming and rolling and they told that she was only 2 cm. So I was, uh, so I was, I was thinking she was like, oh, I'm an abro, so <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but she was exaggerating. Uh-huh. So, cause if this was, I was 4 cm and I wasn't feeling the same thing, I didn't understand why she 2 cm, she was screaming all over the place. So I even walked out and then while they were process, doing the paperwork, I went to sit with my husband and my mom, who were at the waiting area. And they were like, go and go and pretend you are, you are hurting so that <laughs> they would process you quickly. Uh -huh, because if you are walking about like this, no one will mind you. So I had to now go. So when the crowds were kind, I had to like, because the woman was screaming, I also intentionally screamed to see if 
the <laughs> what camera process me. Yeah, so first of all, they finished processing me then. I was there, then gradually the pain, I realized that no, now the pain has started increasing a little, but it was still very manageable. As at um, 11 o'clock, they came to check my dilation again, and it was still 4 cm. Then they said I wasn't progressing fast enough because um, they checked my contractions and ideally you're supposed to have about 10 in every, th um, in 10 in th a, a couple in about 10 minutes. Yes, and I was having only three in 10 minutes. So they said it wasn't, um, I wasn't progressing enough. So they had to not induce, they had to give me a certain medication that would escalate the labor. And that was the beginning of my pain. So once they, and this was around 12 o'clock, so they changed my, the, my I, um, the drip, and then they changed and put the other one there. And then the pain started. And for someone who was crying, uh, who was previously laughing at people, now the midwives were laughing at me because I would scream. And so there were other people in the other labor was, so it was like one person would start treble and I will continue all to, it, it, it was just funny. It, it was painful. So when the contractions come and there was so much pressure on my, um, on my uh, rectum. So I felt like I wanted to poop. And they said, no, it was the baby who was sitting there. So it was painful. I would scream. Then um, there was a point. So my water had still not broken and they wanted to break. So they had to come and check and then before, manually first break my water. She did it the first time. It didn't break. So she said she'll come back again. And the pain was unbearable. So then around two one o'clock, she came back and then did it again and finally my water broke and then I was still there then it got this I told them I wanted to push they said it hasn't got because they checked my dilation and I was now about five around 12 o'clock I was about five yeah five six cm so they said um I should if I push um, I would um, spoil my womb. So when the contractions is coming up, Sarah, they say, don't push, don't push, because if you push, you spoil your womb. And I'll just be screaming, oh my God. And then I'll be screaming, so then when it passes, so it got, I forgot to, when I got there, they wanted me to remove my dress and change. I was doing my, my fair, my fair, my fair. But when the pain set in, in fact, I just went back naked. I, I, I didn't want anything even on me. It was, uh. so I called my husband to get someone to go to my the doctor. I told him that I needed him to do the C, like I, they should just come and take the baby out of me. I was ready for a CS. I, and then my, so my doctor later on came around and said, no, I would be, the pain is normal. I, I should just go through it. So around three o'clock, I felt the urge to poop. So I, I told them that, no, I need to poop. And they said, no, it was the baby. So I was insisting, no, it is not, I just, I need to poop. So they said I should go, they showed me the way to the bathroom. They said I should go to the bathroom. <laughs> I got to the bathroom and I couldn't, like, it, it, truthfully, it wasn't poop. I was just, and then the thing came and I was, I screamed. So, when in the bathroom, when the, I still had a, a, a serious contraction, I screamed. Then um, from the bathroom, so once it stopped from the bathroom, I ran quickly to back to my within that space. So this was around 3.30, only for them to then, so they left me. Then around 4 o'clock, I called, I was screaming. Now it was, the screams were just too much. I called them that they should come and check my dilation again because I, I, I really am pushing. Whether they like it or I'm pushing. They came to check and then I was fully dilated. So they now transferred me from the bed to the delivery bed, the one that they put your legs uh -huh, apart. Hey! <laughs> Then they said they were going to ask me to push. Um, I should just listen to them. I should only push on their command. So they said I should push. And then I started screaming. Uh, and they said, you are not pushing. No, you are not pushing. You are not doing this. Right? I, said, ah. then they, they, I said, no one has told me how to push. So I will still push. And they said I should push. And I will, I will scream. And then with all my energy. Then they said the baby is not coming. I'm not pushing. So then they said I should breathe in and then keep quiet close my mouth and then use that to push 
And then when I tried, they said, no, I'm rather pooping. I'm not pushing. <laughs> so then they said they could see the head. So I should just push, let out a, a, a huge push. I did that thing and I... I just, they said I was, I was like, okay, I don't know how to push. You didn't teach me, I just bust out. You didn't teach me how to push. I can't push, I won't push. And they were like, madam, your baby is not breathing. From, from where his head is, apparently his nose was like kind of on the wall. So I just needed to push for the baby to come, the head to come out. And I was tired. I just couldn't push. So she said, well, because I can't um, push, the baby too is struggling. So then they have to cut me. So she went to take her scissors and then I could just hear the skin like she just cuts so that the baby would have enough breathing space for the hair to come out. So immediately she cuts. I just let out. Um, it was easy. I just let out, I think, a final push and then the baby, the head came out fully and then they were able to bring the baby out. This was at 4.25 p.m. And the the thing too about it, immediately the baby came out, the pain just kind of just vanished. So I honestly wasn't sure what time they removed the placenta because I don't remember pushing for the pushing out the placenta as others say. Because I know she, she, her hand was in there, she was massaging my tummy, and then uh -huh. then so when they removed the baby, then they put the baby on my chest, and then I remember I was like my baby thank you jesus my baby thank you jesus i was so dramatic thank god thank you jesus my baby and then uh -huh, yes and then the baby wasn't crying so i was like why is he not crying why is he not crying then they carried the baby and i think they just shook him a little and they started crying and then like he was like now your baby is crying so they're going to clean him up and then that was yes that was part one then the part two was when they come in to stitch the episiotomy hey so they injected they had to inject the parts hmm so they injected longer story that one was painful but when she started stitching because i saw the thread and then the needle when she started stitching for some reason i don't think she injected the place well because she started stitching then i could all of a sudden start feeling the pain and it was painful so but even though it didn't last so long i screamed and she couldn't inject me again with another anesthesia because she had she had already started sewing so i had to scream through the stitching and to the glory of god i had a bouncing baby boy <laughs> So from the hospital, I gave birth on a Friday and then I moved from the hospital on Sunday. In fact, during my stay in the hospital that evening, obviously my husband was around, but he couldn't stay. They had a cutoff of visiting, visiting time. So that evening, I, could, yes, my, I couldn't feed the baby to when I was in the hospital because I didn't have I, my breast milk didn't come and they were like oh the baby can survive 72 hours without food and then so this friday night to saturday morning the truth is i've never held any baby before my baby is literally the first baby i have held so i didn't know how to hold him and i didn't go for a lot of the pregnancy school and later and um, pregnancy school and even when i went i don't remember them showing us how to like hold the baby so i honestly didn't know what i was doing so um from friday night to saturday um i i he was just lying there and fortunately he didn't cry plenty so yes that was fine then yes then saturday the whole day they had not yet come to even bath the baby <laughs> so i was worried and so but finally they came to bath the baby so when they came out they should show me how to swaddle the baby uh -huh. so they taught me the one of the nurses taught me how to do that in the hospital so yeah but when i came home from sunday we discharged on sunday when i came home on sunday um, i went to live with my mom let's say my auntie um, so yes, she was she was with us. I was with her for the first eight weeks, and it wasn't easy. 
even with the help, it wasn't easy. Um, then from eight weeks, um, so but it was better. It was, I'll say, it was better. But I moved to my husband's place after when the baby was just eight weeks, and that's I think that's where the real struggle, yeah, started because he would go to work during the day, and it was just me and the baby. And it was exhausting. He won't. He won't sleep. He will cry. There was a there was a day he cried so much that my neighbor came. Like like what's what's wrong? And I didn't know. There are points he just cries, and I just leave him there. We are both sitting down crying because <laughs> it's going to. Be. We are both crying. Of course, then at the point I felt like I stopped, then I carry him, then I try to breastfeed him. Yes, then he comes down and. I put him to bed. So I didn't have, I haven't had help till, I didn't have help from, he was eight weeks till, uh, obviously my husband would help when he's home. Uh -huh. But from eight weeks till four months, when I had to go back to work, even with the four months, Mondays to Fridays, when I'm going to work, then my auntie will come and come and babysit uh -huh. during, the, during the periods I'm off, I'm off to work. That day, hey God, because of that, I don't want another boy. Um, we got a midwife to come and do it at home for us. So when, <laughs> when she came, hey Lord, when she came, uh, my uncle, so I, I, I was living at my auntie's place at the time. So it was my auntie, my uncle, but my husband was around and then my cousins and then myself and the baby. So when she came, the midwife came and then she picked the spot. For where they will do the circumcision in the hall. My uncle just ran away. Who was in the military? He just ran away to the room. Then my auntie too said, Oh, she'll be back soon. She also just left. So it was <laughs> myself and my husband. And so I was they brought the baby. I told my husband I couldn't watch. So they brought the baby to um we brought the baby to the hall the midwife laid her things she took the scissors so i was standing there and then she put the scissors them in the the first case put it in and was i just about in fact she started cutting and then i just ran to the room we did the ring method but she had to cut. i just ran to the room and i was the boy was screaming. you know those screams that he screamed the voice didn't come so like there's a there's some silence, but you can't, the boy is screaming. I was also in the room crying. I was behind, I locked the door and I was just sitting on the floor crying. And this boy was screaming, I was crying. So he cried till I think the thing was after the initial cut and then they put, he was crying. Then they finally, when I, I heard they had finished, I came out of the room soaked in tears and they, she asked me to breastfeed him. I didn't know how to hold it because I was scared that what if I hold the leg this way and then the thing pains him and she says I should Whilst breastfeeding him I was crying And so after that the circumcision they gave him we gave him para and the first night the first two nights wasn't easy, but Thank God he's a man <laughs> Um, wow. It was tough. It's not easy to go through. It's not easy to go through. But it's 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 a necessity. Well, it's a necessity. So I I didn't want him to grow up hating me. So we had to do it. Um, the thing is, before we started, before, when I was, I think within my last trimester, I joined a couple of mom support groups on WhatsApp. So. I was hearing stories about the circumcision, about the immunizations, and especially the immunizations. So I was very scared because most of them, the way their babies were reacting, like, so I was really nervous. I was really scared. So we had to go for our first shot at six weeks. We went there that day. Did I hold him? No, I couldn't. I couldn't hold him. I couldn't hold him. I was in there because they insisted I had to be in the room. So I was in there with him, but my husband held, I couldn't hold, my husband held me and then they, you know, he had to take two shots, was it two or three? He had to take two shots on the, on the ties. 
So they gave him the first one. The boy had, you know, this is the thing when the boy just, my son's, my son's cry can wake up the dead. Though. Like he can scream. So <laughs> the boy screamed. He screamed and I also started crying. So the nurses were laughing at me. Oh, we cried. In the, so he did the first one. Immediately they did the second one. We both cried. Then after that, I just wiped my my tears and I carried my son and we left. We gave him haram. The night he didn't he he didn't sleep. In fact, we didn't sleep. It was terrible. He was feverish. So we we had to give him para and then be doing the hot um, cold towel treatment, cold water treatment. Um, so we had to put cold towel on his feet just to keep him um, reduce the fever. He cried throughout the night. We didn't sleep. We did, no, we did ten, um, his fever, his temperature was around 39. He was all over the place. Six weeks, 10 weeks, 14 weeks. We, he, I don't think he, he didn't react well to the, um, to the medications. So, in fact, I, we insult, I think after every medication, we insult the whole of from Ghana Health, from WHO to Ghana Health Service to everybody. We were upset with everybody. For, we didn't understand why we had to put the kids. In fact, we called the nurses wicked and all that. But hey, it is what it is. Fortunately for me, um, I was able to exclusively breastfeed him for the first six months. Yeah. But I think at five months, four weeks, the last week, um, I was advised to start introducing him to certain foods so that um, he may not reject him. So I started with Mori Koko, a regular Mori Koko. Um, he did, he, he, in the first few times he kind of, he took it, but after three times he, he, he wouldn't budge. He just wanted the breast milk. So fully, when he got to six months, I, um, I started with, um, hey, hmm. before, before the six months, what didn't I, bowls, uh, the winning kit. In fact, I went all out crazy, spoons, bowls, what, what not. Then we started thinking that immediately, I was expecting that once, in fact, I've read blood, baby led winning, what sort of winning, I've read all those things, ready to implement it. No, no, this boy too has a mind of his own. He still wants the breast milk. Whatever you do, he still wants the breast milk. But now, um, I, start, so I started off with him on fruits. So I did apples, I did pears, pear puree, apple puree. We've done popo. Hey, fancy, fancy. We've done puree, butternut squash. We puree th things that me, myself, I wasn't even eating. Um, I've done import on potter for him, which he had with sweet potatoes. Um, he has eaten. I've done butternut squash with beef for him which he took and um, i blended weird things oats and mango he he's taken it um i think he likes sweet things because <laughs> when you give him the the the, the meals of oats or cocoa with mango or with apple or those sweet things he'll eat it but I give him in pot on pot or, or i did in, in spinach um, yes, in Kuntum race too. He didn't really eat it, but give him oats with something, a sweet fruit in there, and he would he would eat it. So we are we are only seven months. We are still it's a struggle. The food there because you have to dance. Hey, when we started eating, we had to be eating with cartoons. Dave and Ava always on. Uh, I used to, Dave and Ava I was on, so I can when I can sing nursery rhymes. If I conjure my own rhymes, we'll sing, we'll dance before one will enter his mouth. So it's a whole work. In fact, I don't know why I was rushing for him to start eating. If I had known what I know now, I've just taken my time. I would not be looking forward to the food. It's a struggle, and I pray he starts. I actually, I'm still taking baby workshop, winning workshops, to get all the apples to help him to eat. I'd say I was blessed during pregnancy. To the extent that I didn't have any facial acne that people experience, their pregnancy nose, that people's noses bloat. <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't have, I didn't have that. Um, I didn't have, yes, yeah, so it was basically just my, obviously I put on a few pounds, um, yes. So before I was pregnant, I was about 60 kg and then I ended that 
I think I added 50, 20 to it. So I became uh, 80. Uh -huh. But I didn't gain so much weight. Um, I got one or two stretch marks on my waistline. But um, nothing um, so out of the ordinary. I, I didn't experience morning sickness from day one to day till I popped. I was very active. In fact, then I was still going, my ninth month, I was going swimming. Yes, I actually, the week before I gave birth, I was in the water. So I didn't experience a lot of um, changes, yes, on my body. Um, but after I gave birth, obviously I don't have six packs. <laughs> I'm still working on my tummy. I still have um, the mummy pouch, as they say. Uh -huh. So yes, that. But my um, my weight, I think, has gone back. I've lost. I didn't even wear. I didn't do any of the workouts. I'm now trying to work out. I didn't waste. I couldn't waste train. I bought about five different waist trainers. They are all lying there. I I couldn't. It's it's too much of a hassle. Yeah. So um, thank God things are going back. And um, I hope I've started working out, so I think my tummy too would be will go back to normal. But I didn't experience a lot of issues. Um. So. Um. I had an episiotomy, which means I was cut. The healing process was something else. Because there was a time that my th my stitches even actually came out that I couldn't walk. I I, I screamed from the back. <laughs> okay, so that was tough. And I don't know if that scarred me <laughs> to some extent. So I was really, really scared and I didn't know what to expect if I should have sex. I didn't know what to expect. And fortunately, I was blessed. I'm, a, I'm blessed with a very patient husband who wouldn't press because there are stories of people pressurizing their wives and all that. He, he wouldn't pressurize you. But um, I think once I fully healed, it took me about four months again. According to my husband, nothing had changed. So we are blessed. <laughs> And I think another thing that I think helped with my week is there are a lot of concoctions that our mothers make us do. So I was given, I was made to drink cloves with certain herbs, uh, mahogany, certain leaves, thing, things that concoctions that my mom, my auntie did for me. And then I was, yes, I was asked to sit in as part of the healing to sit, use Adan salt. Yes, put in water use that to wash there and all that so all those i think helped with the healing process and i must say that my i think one of the issues with pregnancy that people i don't know if people talk about it is your sex drive mine actually has dipped like dipped so i have to put in an effort uh-huh but thank god things are coming back to yeah shape so I wouldn't say I experienced, I don't know whether to call it depression, maybe it was very mild because there were times I was just tired, I, there were, there, God forgive me, but there were moments that I was like, God, like just, I, if I could hit an undo button, <laughs> I would have, it's like I would undo because now you Especially when he was crying in those early days. You are both crying. I actually, right after delivery, I couldn't look myself in the mirror because my body was different. I used to have a flat tummy and I used to admire myself, but I couldn't, I couldn't stand in front of the mirror. I, I, I have a mirror in my room, but I would always pass by. I wouldn't look in the mirror. So some uh, moms on them, I shared this experience with some moms on my mom support group. And then they they encouraged me so i actually went to stand in front of the mirror and just admired everything about my body so i think that that was in fact that was the beginning of my healing or if i should say let me start by saying that i regret 
all those moments in my life before I, get, I became pregnant where I would stay up watching movies instead of sleeping. If I could go back to those times, I would have slept. I haven't had, I don't think I've had up to three, three hours continuous sleep since I gave birth. Sleep. That, that part has been has been a hassle. I I I am surprised. I'm even standing like I because I'm really sleep deprived. And secondly, the fact that you always have to. I I I think I get scared easily these days because I'm always anxious and I'm always worried that something might happen to him. Or he's maybe he's not sleeping well, he's not eating right. It may it become it's it's very daunting <laughs> psychologically. It's very daunting. It's very stressful. And yes, money wise, because you now the things that um how do I even put this? Things that you would otherwise not have planned for. Now you have to be buying things. You have to be buying food. As if you don't manage your finances well, it becomes a huge challenge. And motherhood, the whole uh, the whole thing of motherhood is a huge challenge. It's, 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 it can be very difficult. It can be very difficult. He smiles a lot at me. He smiles a lot. And he has these wet kisses and oh. And when I go out and I come back and he looks at me, he recognizes me and he just, he just smiles. <laughs> I'm like, yes. And the fact that um, in this world, like sometimes you feel so inadequate. Like if you don't know if you are doing something, you are doing, you are doing the things right. And you know, people have issues with you and then you have, you are, stressed at work and probably you are not giving your best at work but to this baby you are just perfect like you are just adequate you are just enough the love is just so real like it, it just makes everything worth it i just when i just see him smile i just i'm just excited it's just enough <laughs> it takes away the sleeplessness yeah this video was brought to you by Middle Kids Shop.